So you're with um, Harper Collins, and, and what year are we talking that you that you start with them? Oh gosh, okay. So I graduated college in '97, so it would have been probably '98 to 2001, 2002, something like that. Long time ago. Get a sense because I know obviously some time has passed and publishing has changed somewhat. Uh, if we're talking back in, in 22, everyone's still saying ebook. Who's going to read an ebook on your computer? Get out of here. <laughs> no, there's no need for us to invent our own e reading devices. Maybe some big tech company will do it for us. So that'll definitely work out great. <laughs> anyway. work out great. <laughs> so uh, at that point, um, obviously, uh, those of us who have been paying attention to the publishing world have seen some editors uh, resign in rather spectacular fashion, blowing up on social media and letting us all know that uh, they feel that they have not been uh, fairly compensated or treated fairly at the time. We're talking about a different time. When you get there in 2002, are you able to work just the one job as an editor or do you have to work other jobs to, to get the rent? I know, yeah, it was not a high paying job. Um, it was it was tough um, to make ends meet and the, the hours were uh, a lot. Um, I worked a lot of weekends um, and, and evenings after work. Um, I did not have another job, but I did live in some sketchy places <laughs> because that was what I could afford. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't feel any, I don't, in for me, I don't wish it had been any different, um, but it was, you know, I always saw it as an apprenticeship and basically it was such a learning experience, especially um, about the mechanics of writing. Um, one of the things we did in, in our office was we shared the, um, the editors, the senior editors, um, the editors that were more senior than me, um, shared their editorial letters that they would write to their authors. So they would print out a copy of the editorial letters and they would all go in a box um, and like up on a, sh up on a shelf that was very central to the office. And then whenever the, the, be the beginning editors, um, wanted to kind of learn the ropes of writing editorial letters and, um, the mechanics of that, you know, uh, the editorial letters would be things like pacing, character development, um, structure, uh, texture and tone, all of those things, editors would be addressing all of those topics in these letters. And so it was a great learning experience to be an editor, but it's also a learning experience um, to be a writer. And again, I, I didn't think of it that way at the time, but it was sort of like going to writing school a little bit because you're just picking up all of these kind of um, details on mechanics and also you know too on the market and and readership and like thinking about um looking at uh stories from the lens of from the side of the reader and trying to connect with the reader because of course in publishing we're focused on selling the books and so um having that you know perspective of there's self-expression on this side for the writer and there's also trying to meet the reader and I feel like in those letters, all of that was present and um, it was, it was wonderful. So I feel like I got so much out of it um, that, you know, living kind of hard scrabble for a while was, um, was, was worth it. Um, yeah. I'm assuming that's all building a base of knowledge that you're still using in your daily life today as an author. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think it was a very foundational, um, experience for my writing. And I think, you know, I think over the years, you know, one of the reasons I went to get my MFA was that I did want to, I think when I first started out writing, I always had that um, marketplace mentality in my mind of what do people want to read and what is publishable. And that that's just kind of where I came from. But it was, you know, then I would look at my journals, coming back to my journals, and they were so raw and like full of kind of self-expression and exploration. And so for me, um, a big challenge was sort of bringing 
finding the place where those two things met. And, and so I think it, um, the reason I went to get my MFA was that I wanted to be working in an environment where I was not thinking of, at all about, will this ever get published? It was all completely about finding my voice and, and not, and kind of dropping all the other, um, all the other considerations of, will this ever go anywhere? Um, and so, and it was, I mean, hugely helpful for me to just try to find what is it that I, what is it that I love? What is it that I really, really want to be writing about? Um, how do I capture the, the vulnerability of my journals in like what I'm writing? Um, and so I know that's, that's a long answer to your question, but, um, but yeah, it, 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 that going back to editing, I feel so lucky to have had that as a piece of my writing life because I know a lot of writers don't don't get to have that um that piece of kind of an experience um in the publishing world and it's just it's been invaluable to me for sure 